Are you a Blackmagic Design Ursa Mini Pro owner? Do you experience IR contamination at four or six stops of ND? Have you or any of your team ever seen Moray or aliasing? If the answer is yes, then don't wait another minute. Pick up the phone and call the professionals. If you hadn't heard of the Rawlite Optical Low Pass Filter with IR protection, it's an optical low pass filter with IR protection from raw light. Uh, we shot some tests examining IR pollution and I'm gonna use the words pollution and contamination interchangeably throughout this video with the built-in NDs on the Ursa Mini Pro G2, both with and without the raw light filter. And we also filmed Shane in the most problematic patterned shirt he could muster up to see how the OLPF dealt with that compared to the camera without the filter. And due to the weather turning south on us, we actually shot the footage with the filter in uh, almost a week later. So it's, it's not perfectly scientific, but hopefully we'll give you enough information to decide if this might be worth a purchase for you or not. One quick point. We've had the raw light filter for a while. We ordered it very soon after moving from red cameras. Going from the MX to the Dragon sensor, we'd seen the value in really good inbuilt IR filtration. And we felt that the less we needed to worry about putting additional filters on all our lenses, which often already have Promis on them, the better. Red has virtually no visible moray or aliasing at all. And having lived through the 5D Mark II, prior to getting the mosaic engineering filter for that, that again wasn't an issue. We wanted rearing its head in our footage once more. We upped the shutter to a crazy level somewhere in the 2000s when shooting at f4 because we didn't want to introduce other changes to alter the image. We dropped the shutter with um, each additional two stops of ND that we added. Um, the color is all the default color uh, sunlight white balance setting 5600K tint 10 with the Blackmagic Design Extended Video 4 LUT applied. Prior to this test, my general thirds, thought, thirds, thoughts on IR pollution on the Ursa G2 without the raw light filter with this, up to four stops, you don't have to worry too much. IR pollution is certainly visible and perceivable at four stops, but you have to really look for it and um, compare side by side with the same shot stop down without ND to see the difference. But at six stops, you definitely see it and it can cause problems. However, watching these test shots back, to be completely honest, it's not close to as bad here as I expected to see. Those inbuilt NDs are doing a pretty damn good job. Not perfect, but not bad at all, to be honest. We shoot a lot in the north of our state where there's lots of red dirt and red dust. We've noticed it really blatantly there. And I, I wonder if it's to do with the fact that there's like red hues everywhere. You point the camera, it's just more pronounced. And the, the, the sky doesn't look right. And next to the Pocket 6K with an external Hoya UVIR filter on it, the IR contamination had stuck out. We only did one professional shoot, I think, in that environment before having the raw light installed. And there was a definite improvement. You can see here, I'm just taking the Hoya UV um, external filter on and off the lens quickly with six stops of internal ND to try to see the color shift in the monitor. Interestingly, when we added the Hoya UV IR filter with the maximum inbuilt six stops of ND, it's extremely hard to tell the difference between the shot with no ND and the shot with six stops of ND with the external UV IR filter. So using an external filter like this one is obviously an option you could take to kick IR contamination to the curb. Of course, it won't address moray, and unless you buy multiple, you'll be taking them on and off your lenses, or you could use a clip-on Mac box with, um, with a square filter as well. So how does six stops of internal ND fare with the raw light filter installed and no external UV IR filter? 
Well, there is a perceivable improvement, I think. I'd recommend the filter for this purpose. There is still a change, but it's minor. I noticed Shane's shirt's bluish green looks warmer. That color separation is not as good as with No ND. His skin looks a little more magenta, but it's all very minor and very usable, in my opinion. Just for kicks, we added a 0.9 Tiffin ND filter on the end of the lens uh, to get nine stops of ND. And this is what that looks like with and without the Hoya UV IR filter applied. Can you see the difference? It's very subtle. I think that's a testament to the raw light filter and the better than I thought IR protection on the built-in NDs. Compare that to the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K at nine stops with and without the Hoya UV IR filter and you can see what a massive difference there is. That's nightmare fuel. Be very unscientific, I would say with the raw light filter and six stops of ND, you get something that approximates four stops of ND without the raw light filter. Very usable, but still a little bit of IR contamination, but extremely minor and completely usable. So let's talk about Moray with and without the raw light filter. Before we'd installed it, Shane did have an issue with the fabric of a medical gown on a doco shoot and he was having to adjust his distance from the subject, sticking mostly to close-ups and long shots and avoiding mids to steer clear of nasty moray. It was a freelance shoot where he was handing ProRes files straight off so he, he wasn't going to have the opportunity to edit. So Shane found what he thought would be the most problematic shirt he had. He bought a few but this one was really moray's friend. Now these tests are very flawed. The distances aren't perfectly the same between the different days of shooting uh, and the cameras and Shane's like movement is obviously not perfectly the same. That said, I think it's clear looking at these, um, it's clear to see um, that with a problematic fine cross stitch pattern like on this shirt, at the right distance and detail frequency, Moray can still rear its head with the raw light optical low pass filter installed. But to me, it looks visibly reduced and not as severe as without the filter. You're potentially still going to see it at times, but not as easily and not as much. It definitely helps. With the raw light optical low pass filter installed, Moray and aliasing, have never once been a visible problem for us or for clients and we've shot a lot of interviews and a lot of shots of people walking around in all different kinds of fabrics. Ultimately, I think the raw light filter is a, is a welcome addition to the Ursa Mini Pro. Uh, it's an improvement, but not a silver bullet. Whether or not it's worth that level of improvement is entirely up to you. I think it is, but that's just me. What do you think based on what you've seen here? I'd love to hear your opinions on the Ursa Mini Pro with regards to IR and More, or your experience with and thoughts on the Raw Light OLPF. I'd love to chat in the comments below, but until next time, just be yourself. That's what's really cool.